Hello YouTube, this is Josh from the Pantech Brothers, and once again, this is the Tech News at Noon. Today, we are covering a story about T-Mobile offering a service called Digits, which, which allows you to assign multiple numbers to a single device, assign multiple numbers to multiple devices, so you can essentially have, let's say, a business line and a personal line attached to a single device. Or let's say you can have a business line ring multiple devices. So they are doing this by creating a new system of IDs that essentially attach your numbers to an ID and that ID is associated with multiple devices. So think of uh, Google Voice for example used to allow it to ring to uh, different uh, phone numbers so you can uh, get the same features of that um, but just specifically with T-Mobile service which allows you to have priority over like uh, data uh, services like Google Voice and such like that and you also get to take advantage of features like HD calling so that's really cool right now it is just in beta and is free for team existing T-Mobile customers to use um, there's not really uh, any information as far as when it'll be released from beta to the general public but that is available so very exciting uh, I know I will find it very useful if I decide to switch over uh, one of my other numbers to T-Mobile and be able to carry one device and get multiple phone calls from two different numbers on it that would be awesome so next up is Microsoft is bringing ARM back and what that means is you may remember the kind of ill-fated Windows RT, which was kind of a Windows 8 version that ran on ARM processors, which are mobile processors essentially for like cell phones and tablets. And people, it was a cool idea. It kind of gave you the feel of using Microsoft Windows without all the functionality, unfortunately. So no standard desktop applications um, would run on it. So you couldn't run like standard Microsoft Office, Adobe Photoshop, that type, those type of regular applications you would install because it was a different uh, processor type. So. RT kind of gave you those touch apps from like the Windows Live tiles and such like that, but it wouldn't let you use all the functionality that people were used to in Windows. So it kind of flopped. Now, Microsoft is coming out again with essentially a software emulator built into Windows 10 starting next year that allows any x86 Win32 applications to be run natively on ARM processors. So what does that mean? essentially you will be able to get the extended battery life of a like cell phone or tablet on a laptop that runs full Windows OS so being able to run Adobe Photoshop for example on a laptop that has a ARM processor but being able to have a battery that lasts two three four times it did all depending on the uh, processor power so they are initially releasing this because of a partnership with Qualcomm and it will be available on Snapdragon 835 processors and laptops that are expected to be in the market next year. That is all the specific devices and CPUs that are being announced but it's a very cool opportunity to be able to have full-fledged uh, Windows apps and full Windows support and utilization on a device that could have an extremely long battery life it would be very nice especially if you think of maybe commuters who have long um, train rides or plane rides for hours and hours on end and being able to have a device that doesn't need to be charged or don't have to carry a battery bank or spare battery with you so very cool and very exciting next up um, PC Mag has released a kind of best of ISPs specifically for gaming. And so they did a review of lots of different ISPs. 
and broke down the testing into quality, speed, and um, latency. And so what they did is they kind of came up with a formula and tested different regions of the United States and ranked those ISPs by those different um, sections. So you have, you know, the lower the numbers, the better, obviously. You know, when you're gaming online, the one thing that you are most worried about is latency, the ping. And so the higher the latency, higher the ping, the more choppy the game's going to feel. You aren't going to get uh, direct kind of feedback from your actions, uh, especially for those first-person shooters or, like, racing games. Not having the one-to-one -one feel, kind of, of when you're pressing an input on a controller, or keyboard, or steering wheel, and seeing that exact movement take place on screen because of the connection time back to the server that's having to translate that information in that input uh, you know, really degrades the performance and sometimes can make a game really unplayable for multiplayer. So this is very useful, I thought, to uh, especially in seeing in my region what uh, ISPs are available and then how they rank. Uh, one of the uh, ISPs that I used to use uh, was ranked the worst. Um, the one I use now was kind of the middle tier. I don't um, have the ability to get uh, fiber to my location right now, so I will never be able to see the super fast speeds of some of these other ISPs, but um, it's a very good resource. So once again, I hope you guys enjoyed Tech News at Noon, and this is Josh from the Pantech Brothers, and we'll see you tomorrow.